Uh, we are at Blockchain Next. My guest is Vaksam Mirza uh, from Avanza uh, Innovations. Hello. Hi. Really nice to be here. Uh, you were talking about the smart city of Dubai, right? Uh, you were talking about introducing blockchain into the city. Um, can you briefly uh, explain how the blockchain can help us uh, as a citizens? Uh, yeah, first thing I want to clarify is that we are one of the cities helping Dubai government uh, on, the blo on their blockchain journey. There are many others like us who are playing their role in blockchain adoption and transforming Dubai into the first blockchain city in the world. Uh, basically what Dubai government is trying to do is they're trying to pick up one journey at a time that I go through as a resident of the city. So what do I do? I go and I would lease property, I could buy property, I could incorporate a company, I could get the registration uh, of my car renewed, right? So these are journeys that I go through. What Dubai government is trying to do is they're trying to pick up one journey at a time, transform it completely and then port it onto blockchain. Now while they do this, they'll need some building blocks. So everything is built around digital ID, for example. The digital ID is a must. They have a vault project in which all my documents would be preserved so that different journeys can consume this. So basically, this is what Dubai is trying to do, transform citizen journeys onto blockchain. And the objective of doing this is customer happiness. They're just doing this so that I, as a resident or citizens of the city, when we go by our lives and interact with government, we just get a very happy experience. The other objective of doing this is that, uh, I think by 12th December 2021, that's the day when Dubai government will either issue or receive the last piece of paper. There will be no paper in Dubai after that in government dealings. Now, working backwards, you cannot achieve this if multiple organizations are not knitted together through a trusted network. Because today, I take one organization's paper with their stamp on it to another organization and that's how they trust it, right? If there is no paper, how do they trust whatever information is coming their way? And in comes blockchain. Blockchain knits this, these entire journeys together to solve these two big objectives of Dubai government, customer happiness and going paperless. I think government is um, government of Dubai is ready to go full blockchain, but um, does the people? So it doesn't touch people. Uh, what people will get is the end result, which is a very seamless experience and they should be thrilled about it because they are not having to put in the hard work. The hard work is being put in by the government and obviously a lot of private sector companies, but it's, it's just like internet, you know. So 10 years ago, uh, you'd find, and, and especially in the late 80s, if you look at some of the old YouTube videos, you'll see people discussing internet on forums such as big as CNN, for example. And people are discussing, hey, why do you have this at the rate sign in the email address? What is this HTTP protocol? Today, all of this is irrelevant because what we are enjoying is the flood of information. Nobody cares why there's at the rate sign in the email address or why this, what is HTTP protocol? Same is the case with blockchain. Today, people are going into the nitty gritty of the technology, but when the technology starts delivering its, its results, uh, it will be for everyone uh, to benefit. So, people will generally see the end result and, and get the benefit of ease of transactions. Uh, is Dubai already a smart city using a blockchain? No, so the smart city is a very vague term, by the way. There's no clear definition in, in the world of what a smart city is. But Dubai is trying to get there. Dubai is trying to get to a place where the, the government and organizations can get real-time feedback from the city as and when events are taking place. I'll give you another example of a project that we are involved in. So this is an emergency medical nerve center that we are building for Dubai Health Authority. Today in Dubai, if there is a accident on the road or if there's an apartment block fire, and when the paramedics come, they pick the patient up and take them to one particular hospital, Rashid Hospital, because that is the only trauma center in the city. When the patient lands in the city, that's when they realize that they do not have the equipment available to treat the patient. So for example, if it's a burn victim, so the hospital has burn beds, but they're not available right now, they're occupied. What we're trying to do is that when paramedics pick up a critically uh, ill patient based on traffic, weather, equipment availability, physician availability, we tell the ambulance, this is where you need to take the patient and it has the highest probability of survival. So the closest hospital might be two streets down the road, but the survival of this patient might be 10 kilometers away. The probability would be higher there. So, and the other thing that this software does is that it provides eyes and ears to Dubai Health Authority on the demand versus supply. So how many total ICU beds are available in the city at this very moment? How many total CCU beds are available? And this gives a lot of uh, 
uh, strength to Dubai Health Authority to prepare the city for disasters. For example, God forbid, if there's a natural disaster or if there's an Ebola type of a situation and people are flocking into one hospital, Dubai Health Authority will be able to route traffic. One more reason why this project is very important for Dubai is because we're having Expo 2020 in Dubai. So we are a population of 2.8 million people. During the six months of Expo 2020, the city is expecting 25 to 30 million people in the city. Now, if you have 25 to 30 million people in a 2.8 million city, imagine the probability of chest pains going high. Forget road accidents and everything else. And Dubai cannot build two dozen hospitals in the next two years, right? So what they can do is they can optimize the coordination between different health providers and then be ready for that situation. So this is an example of a smart city project that Dubai is doing. And there are many more. And I'm sure there are a lot of technology companies like ourselves, uh, you know, delivering such smart city projects. That sounds really, really great. Uh, do you think that in future will, there will be more some... Uh such smart cities like Dubai? It's, it's an ongoing process. There's no end to it. There's, there's no finish line, you know. Uh, human beings uh, will keep on evolving, will keep on making things better. Uh, you will see a lot of IoT-driven interactions between devices, organizations and consumers. Uh, so there is no end state here, you know. It will keep on happening. But Dubai is one of those cities that uh, adopts technology very, very quickly. So that's, that's where it has the edge. So I, I used to tell people that 10 years ago that Dubai is an architect's paradise because you could come up with the craziest design for a building and Dubai would welcome you. So today Dubai is a paradise for technologists. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing city scale test bed. You can go and experiment with your technology and Dubai will allow you to do that. So the adoption will be much faster. A city like a Warsaw could become a smart city? See, with smart city, uh, adoption of technologies like blockchain, our experience is that these adoptions are much faster if the drive is from the top. If you leave organizations and industry to sit across the table and solve a problem, they will not do it because they have their own objectives, their own priorities, and in some cases, they're competing organizations. How do you expect five banks to sit across the table and, and solve a problem? They're competitors, right? So if the drive is from the top, which means the leadership of the country says, guys, this has to be done or this has to be achieved, the adoption will be much faster. I'm not qualified to comment on Poland. I know very little of Poland. This is my first visit here. I arrived yesterday. So far, I'm loving the city and the country. But uh, I will need to know more to decide whether Poland will, will adopt uh, or become a smart city or, or Warsaw you know, will become a smart city. Uh, but that's the key. The drive has to be from the top. Uh, the regulators have to get involved.